welcome to this episode of Shem Golf Academy. Today, I want to focus on junior golf. I want to start a series on junior golf and how to promote junior golf on things that will make junior golf grow in Kenya, East Africa, Central Africa. I think these concepts are well mastered in Europe and in the uh, US, but I'm sure it's going to help a parent out there or an upcoming coach who wants to promote junior golf. The idea of uh, focusing on junior golf sprang up because uh, Golf Park uh, or just had a very successful junior tournament. I think it's their first junior tournament that I know of. And they had 90 juniors participate. That's great numbers for the first tournament. And that shows that the future is there. The excitement about junior golf is there. Um, and I would like uh, to share my thoughts uh, and uh, things that I think will propel this movement and that excitement uh, to the point where we are building juniors who at the age of 14, 15, 16 are playing scratch. At 17, 18, they are considering playing, pr playing pro and getting out there, getting scholarships uh, to the US, to UK, to go pursue golf as a, as a career. On this episode, I want to talk about how to organize a junior tournament. Uh, this goes out mostly to the captains, the junior conveners, the coaches out there. Uh, it will help you uh, organize junior tournaments and help you run the tournament. It also goes to educate the parents on what to expect uh, and what to ask of their clubs so that they can also help uh, accelerate uh, the junior golf development. So the number one thing I think is we need to get juniors to playing from the level that they are able to make a par or a bogey or double bogey. That's the biggest uh, mistake I've seen uh, in the junior tournaments, especially for the non-handicapped younger juniors uh, from age 6, maybe to 12, are being forced to play from the ladies' tee. Uh, that's too far back for them. So that's number one. Uh, for most people who know, I was on the Junior, uh, junior Golf Foundation of Kenya board as a trustee for two years. And the one one of the agendas that I pushed is the development of junior tees in every club. It's something that's never, it's not there in Kenya. Um, there are a couple of courses which have adapted it. I know for sure Mothaiga have now permanently uh, put junior tees on their course. Uh, it's something that other clubs need to adapt as well. We worked with uh, John Leafland, Van Leafland, who was a national coach. Uh, for Kenya, uh, among with other coaches, uh, Cassio, Rose, who are on the board. And we published a guideline on which every course can adapt, can use as a guideline to set up junior tees, because it's important. The number one thing when you're dealing with juniors, especially when they're a little younger, is to make sure they enjoy the game. If they don't enjoy the game, if you are making them tee from too far back where they have to hit 10 strokes to get to the hole, they'll get bored with the game. So set up junior appropriate tees. Okay? So even if your course does not have a junior, permanent junior appropriate tees during tournament, create temporary tees where the juniors, based on their age, can play par, have a realistic chance of playing par. Okay? Two, make sure that the competition is fair. What do I mean by that? You can't have a six-year-old compete with a 10-year-old. With a 
So what I recommend and what's actually international standard is actually juniors play within age brackets because they don't have a handicap. So the scores are usually gross scores and what's what we should push at every level is that they continually uh, compete over gross scores because at the end of the day, that is how you really mark their development. Uh, so, for instance, US, in the US, when you have kids tournament and because of the large numbers that they have, six years old girls compete with six year old girls. Six year boys, six year old boys compete against six year old boys. So each age has a bracket for that and each gender is competing separately. So boys compete against boys of their age, uh, girls compete with uh, girls of their age. Granted, we don't have those numbers in Kenya, so we cannot have strictly age-based. So what I recommend is that you to take a two or three year gap. So you say six and seven year olds compete against each other, but again, make sure you separate. Girls compete against girls, boys compete against boys. Okay, so six, seven year uh, age group, uh, eight, nine, 10, 11, you get the gist of it, okay? So create a two year bracket, or two or three year, depending on the numbers you have. Um, so that, you know, from 13 to above, you know, or 13 to 15, depending on how many entrants you have, uh, create uh, the brackets and manage them that way. Yes, I know it leads to you having to chalk up a little more money for prizes, but that's how we need to develop this game, okay? So that's tip number two. When you're setting competition, set age groups, and each age group can have their own tee boxes, okay? So that they are competing and getting, you know, six-year-olds don't hit as far as 10-year-olds. So they might need to tee a little ahead. That's okay. Uh, as long as they are having fun, as long as they're realistically playing for par, then they will develop the love of the game. All right? So that is tip number two, age-based and gender-based groupings for tournaments. Very important. And, you know, kids just want, prizes are not expensive. They just want a trophy or a medal. It's not that expensive. But trust me, when that child goes home with that trophy or medal, it gives them the motivation to keep going and to love this game. Okay. Um, the third tip, they play a, the number of holes based on their age. That's really simple. A six-year-old will not hold their attention to play nine holes, let alone 18 holes. Okay. So maybe from the age of the lower age, seven and below, set up their course so that they are playing for six holes. That's their competition. Okay? You want them to enjoy the, the playing and competing. You don't want them to get too tired to where they see it as a, as, as a bother. Okay? I would say eight to 12 year olds, they play competition for nine holes. But they're done. Those 13 and above can play 18 holes, okay? But set the tournament where they are also playing based on the energy levels that they can sustain. They will graduate. The six-year-olds, the seven-year-olds will get to eight-year-olds where they are playing nine holes, okay? And they will develop. Trust me. We all know that kids have, like having fun. If we can make this game fun, if we can make the trainings fun, if we can make the competitions fun, we will get a larger pool of juniors who love playing this game. Okay? So, with all those things that I've said, it comes to the logistics of uh, pairings and teeing. Of course, you're going to pair them based on their age so that they're competing against the same age group. But there's the, the, there is the, the flow on the course that you want. On an 18-hole course, it's 
really very easy. You know, you start those playing nine holes on one side of the course, and you start those playing 18 holes on the other side of the course, and you will get a good flow throughout. The last thing is, again, we focus when it comes to kids, we have to focus on fun. The six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, we play six holes. That will take them maybe an hour, okay? While they 13 to 18, we play 18 holes. It maybe takes them um, four hours to play. So this gap, maybe an hour, hour and a half, two, two to three-hour gap that is there, find a way to make it fun for, the, for those who finish early so that they can all wait and have the presentation at the same time. Bouncing castles, bring those ideas for kids. Uh, bouncing castles, face painting, fun games. Incorporate those things in your golf tournament in, able, uh, in order, one, to be able to keep the kids there so that they can also be there at the presentation, cheer their friends when they win. Two, you're giving the, you are having an opportunity and a longer time to interact with the parents. Okay? So, it's a win-win situation. If the kids and the parents stay there for the presentation, if you have sponsors, then you're giving sponsors value for their money. They get to talk to the parents and they get to get their message across. And if they're getting the results, what happens? They'll continue sponsoring. Okay? Um, because we know at some point we need uh, sponsors to help us promote this game in juniors and we have to give them value for their money all right so with these few tips and I'll continue giving more tips on this uh, what 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 should be the follow-up the captains the green keepers uh, the junior conveners Kindly, kindly, go find uh, the, guide, uh, the guidelines for Junior Tees. I will post the link below uh, for that, uh, those guidelines. Parents, go out there and make sure your captains are actually enabling your kids to play well. Okay? Make sure the captains follow up and actually create Junior Tees. You don't want to be playing with your junior when they are seven year olds and they are teeing from the ladies or white tees, um, it's not going to be a long term, uh, it's not going to benefit the junior long term. One, they will start hating the game. Two, their development will be stunted, it will be slow because they are not having that joy of making a power or making a body. The other thing we need to do is make sure. We do not forget our juniors uh, during our sponsored tournaments, club tournaments. Uh, most clubs really don't factor in juniors during the normal sponsored club tournaments. I know, yes, uh, you want to focus really on your adult memberships, but there is creative ways of including juniors. For one, handicapped juniors should always be able to play in those uh, tournaments and actually win prizes when they actually win and they play well. So factor in juniors and make sure that they win. Make sure that their 